Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. Today's episode 794, and the topic today is about the NRE and what happens when it wears off. <laughs> it sounds pretty weird, but I'll explain in a moment. I'm also going to talk about complaining because that's something that came up in uh, this, this morning's sermon with Reverend Michael. So before I dive into that, let me introduce myself and make sure I can articulate clearly because I, I feel a bit muffled. So let me say hi and first introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. Um, I am the best-selling author. I am the author of the best-selling book. It's the right way around. Fifty Ways to Love Your Lover, um, a book for about relationships for singles and couples, men and women. Um, I'm also a. As if I remember, yes, I'm an inspirational speaker. That's right, <laughs> and, a, and a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women, and also why I do these talks every day which I've done now for over two years, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 794. Yes, the countdown to 800 is getting closer and closer. And the topic today I'm talking about is what to do, um, or what happens when the NRE wears off, and it will. So let me just tell you what NRE is. Let me, just, let me cut to the chase and let me know, let you know what NRE stands for. This actually is a term from the polyamory um, um, Context. I don't know what's the word. It's the pol- it's the community. That's the word community. <laughs> the polyamorous community to an NRE, which which is very simple. It's an F, a new relationship energy of all things. Yeah, right. They come up with that that quote. But see, the thing is, is that it's that that thing that people go through when we have this fast living, immediate sort of experience where when. The new when the, that initial new like new car smell the new um, sheen wears off, it's like we're on to the next thing, and in relationships especially, there are people that do that. Yes, polyamorous. I know. I was talking about the polyamorous. What then? It was community. That was the word looking for. But yes, that's where the term NRE stat comes from. So again, NRE is new relationship energy, because for most people, just the same as when you get your new car, and after a few months. You know, when the first, especially when the first ding happens, that's the, that's the thing that was the thing for me when I had a couple of my new cars, where I, where they were getting ding on the car and that would like take the edge off. It's like, oh, it's not so special anymore. And people do that in relationships too, where that new relationship, well, not smell, but the flavor, the new that new energy of that relationship, has settled in. It's gone past the initial honeymoon phase or the initial excitement and exuberance of the unknown and exploring, that it starts to feel comfortable and usual and normal so this is a trap people fall into a lot and I want to bring in one thing first I mentioned right at the beginning which is the thing about complaining because if you're in a new relationship and you start to complain that's a clue and Reverend Michael said something and I'm going to try and I'll try and paraphrase what he said but basically what, from what he said was complaining is making a public declaration that you don't know the truth that's what he said, and that sounds about right. Because the reality is, if you're complaining, especially I'm mean, talking about if you're doing it out loud publicly, of course, if you're complaining out loud about your relationship that you just got into, that's a big clue that you're denying the truth. The truth may be that maybe you made the wrong choice. That's one option. Which maybe you jumped into a relationship too soon, or you got caught up in the appearance of how they looked, or certain things about them. You went, "Oh, this is so great!" Without stepping back far enough to take a good look. Um, two days ago, I did a talk about love bombing which is this is this is in a way dovetails with because love bombing for the for a recap is one of these terms that came up recently kind of like there's ghosting and some reading and boomeranging and a bunch of other terms out there with well, love bombing is where you where somebody not you but somebody falls in love with you and it's all like um rainbows and, and balloons and and bows and everything else wonderful and then it stops and they disappear well I also talked about narcissism as well in that conversation. Anyway, that was two days ago. So in a way, that's what happens. It's, it's all great, wonderful things are happening at the beginning. And then a few weeks, a few days, or maybe a few months in, it's no longer that exciting anymore. It's no longer that joyful. It's no longer waking up and going, oh, how beautiful everything is and how beautiful my partner is. Now it's like, oh, it's them again. And that happens for people. Now, for some people, it doesn't happen for 20 years. For some people, it happens in 20 minutes. So there's a range in there. But... So the thing about it is we, we have this experience where we go through a wonderful 
um, honeymoon phase or the um, say the new buyer experience, an interesting term to use in this context. We have this thing where we fall into this experience of being in a great relationship initially and it's going great because all the new, the exploring, the unusual, the fresh, the, brand, the, un, the, the unexperienced. But then after a point in time, you get to a point where things are like repeating themselves, where maybe you're doing sex the same, you're doing sex the same way again and again and again, or maybe you don't notice the same things are happening and it's no longer exciting, it's no longer brand new. And for some people, that's not enough. Like when it goes to be comfortable, that's when they bail because they're not used to that. They want it to be fresh and exciting all the time. It's like looking for the next high if you're a drug addict. And in some ways it's like that. There's the need for the next high, the next high, the next high. But the problem is it doesn't get any better because you're not living where you need to live. Kind of getting ahead of myself there. So the piece I want to speak to is what do you do when the, the NRE, the new relationship in energy, fades? or goes away because it will obviously because it's no longer a new relationship energy it's just relationship energy if you're using the same term and this is the point I wanted to make is that relationships frankly for most well for mm, for a large part of the population relationships are supposed to be just like you walk in a relationship and everything works fine then you meet this person your life's going to be better it's going to be good it's going to be easy it's going to be a piece of cake unfortunately I disagree I should say I disagree which is unfortunate if you think it should be that way the thing with relationships are you're bringing two, two individuals together that are ideally going to fit together in some way, shape or form. And a lot of times those people have their own um, habits, <laughs> should we say, ways to do things, ways of being that are unique and expressing, which, which may be what attracts you initially, but when you come up close and you get into a relationship with them, it doesn't quite fit properly. It becomes this, this convoluted, cra um, crazy mixture. And the challenge with that is that it's going to require you to perhaps adjust yourself, to transform your way of being, to fit together with the other person better. Now, I don't mean that you should give yourself up to be with the person. That's not what I'm talking about. Because that's back in the uh, narcissist. The, sorry, excuse me. The um, codependency conversation, which I talked about yesterday or the day before that. That has been up in the conversation recently too. I'm speaking that you become adaptable to the partner you're with, with the proviso that they're also adaptable. Because I, if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, we need to change. And they need to change as well. Just to be fair, you know, if, if that person is not going to change and you're going to change to fit their fixation, you may be giving up something you may not want to give up. So that's another teaching, by the way. So when things change because the newness fades, your new car shine disappears, there's going to be um, opportunities. There's going to be invitations to start seeing beyond what you initially saw with that person. It's going to call you to become a more aware partner. It's not because the reason why I'm saying this is because if you want to be in a relationship with this person and you see this value in it, you may discover that you're going to start hitting your new limit, your new upper limit of comfort. Um, there's a book by um, Gay Hendricks called uh, The Big Leap. It talks about upper limits. And in a way in relationships that can happen where you basically as surprising as it sounds, once the new relationship energy dissipates, you're actually going to find yourself hitting an upper limit, not a lower limit, but upper limit. What you're realizing is you've got to move into a new way of being to be with that partner because the way what you come into is great and wonderful and everything's one is really cool. But then suddenly you realize, oh, I've got to step up to meet where they are now. That's calling you forward to a new level, which could be which is an awesome place to be, by the way, because stepping to another level of relationship is higher than it was before. For me, that's a good thing. It's challenging. I've <laughs> been there, it's been challenging when I didn't choose that, where I didn't fall into that place. So my feeling is there's a sense of opportunity that shows up in a relationship once you get past the initial um, everything's lovey-dovey phase. Again, honeymoon phase is what we call that, which again, it could be 20 years, 20 minutes, 20 days, what it could be. So it's choosing into the relationship. And that's the other part, is that when you get past that initial NRE phase, then it's a choice to choose into that relationship because it's easy to choose out. And again, if you are finding yourself complaining, that's a clue that maybe you're denying the truth. Again, I'm using Reverend Michael's sermon this morning to quote that from. From Agape, by the way, because you're wondering what I'm talking about. So my invitation to you is if you're not already in a brand new relationship, but when you get into a new relationship, this is better to know ahead of time. If you're already in one, then this may be too late to hear this from me. But if you are not yet in one, you're going out on dates and looking to meet somebody, 
go in knowing that you obviously won't know everything about them when you first meet them. So, and as I said, two days ago, but when it was about love bombing, I think it was two days ago, yesterday, two days, recently when it was about love bombing, I was adamant about saying, take your time. I'm still saying that. In relationship, when you're diving into a relationship, it's so easy to get caught up in the euphoria and the joy and the passion. And I've seen people who get on their third, fourth marriage, fall in love and get married in the first three weeks. Yes, there are people like that. I'm not recommending that. I'm recommending take your time because it's easier to, sometimes it's easier to fall in love thinking everything's perfect. It's harder to hold back. And so I'm inviting you to actually do the harder work, which is to stay present and to take your time, get to know somebody and hopefully do the same thing so that they can get to know you and get to know them slowly. So as you get closer and closer, you know them more fully, more massively, massive, yeah, well, you get to know the mass of who they are, energetically speaking, not the weight of who they are, the mass, different. That may not fit. But learning how to become one with that partner in a way that is much more holistic and more joyful, because the truth is when you get to know somebody magical and you get to be in the magic yourself, after you get past the new relationship energy, what you, what you discover, what you find, is even more magnificent than you initially found out. That is what I think a really good relationship is about, is going deeper and deeper and deeper into the intimacy and the connection and the wonderment of what's available with the new partner. I hit just I just hit a, a dead end in my in my download. Some seems anything else that comes up. Hmm. What else is up? <laughs> it's funny how these talks I've got. Something starts coming through and it goes bang, 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 and then it go oh nothing else. So I'll just recap a couple of things. See if there's anything else. So again, holding yourself in check to a degree so you're patient when you're meeting somebody new so you don't you don't throw your you don't throw your chips into the ring so to speak you actually take your time to get to know the person and at the same time and this is one of the things i talk about in my work about taking care of yourself because it's so tempting you fall in love to throw yourself at the other person without any regard for your own self-care and self-support i teach self-love as part of my work because it is such a fundamental principle of everything that you do in life is when you come from self-love first, there is no hunger, no need for the other person to fill you up with energy and love, whatever that is. That's when the new relationship energy becomes additive, not replacing some void you're carrying inside. So to stay true to yourself, to stay aligned to yourself, to stay honoring to yourself is where the goodness comes from because when you own your own space into new relationships, you'll find yourself be much more able to enjoy the relationship and explore it joyfully from a place of patience and a place of detachment which allows you to really get clear that once you get past that initial NRE energy space, or the NRE space, you'll see this person is amazing or not, and you'll be able to choose him more clearly. The challenge in relationship is sometimes you fall in so madly in the beginning, madly in love right at the beginning, and then a few months in you're going, oh, what was I thinking? Now, I've been there myself, I'm sure you have too. It's not pretty, it's not fun, and it's not always pleasant to extricate yourself from that. So my invitation, as I said, and my recommendation is to take it gently, to take care of yourself as you're doing this, to put self-love first. So when you're in the relationship with the other person, you're not hungry for their love to make you feel okay. You actually feel loving already. And by doing so, you're able to explore a relationship from, from, relationship from much more interdependent, which I teach, rather than codependent, and a more additive place to be. That is a healthy approach. And that is probably my centered advice about what I talk about in most of my work anyway is coming from a place of ownership of your space first because then relationship is additive to who you are rather than being someone who's thinking like they won't be complete with that relationship yes there are people who function best in relationship but not from a place of lack not from a place of being incomplete but from a place of just understanding the addition of the energies that's part of the human design stuff I talked about before when you learn how to love yourself first, I recommend you do that as your homework first, is when you love yourself first, being in a relationship becomes much easier, much more fluid, much more authentic, and much more holistic. Fancy words I know, but the reality is, when you are loving yourself, you're not coming from a desperate place. You come from a whole place, an honoring place for yourself, and then also a respectable place for your partner, or I should say a respectful place for your partner too. That dance of relationship is vital because otherwise it becomes a very enmeshed and messy way to be, which most people still do. I think that's, that may be the piece I was looking, looking to put in. 
Yeah, that was the piece I want to speak to because the reality for me, the reality of a relationship has to start with a relationship with yourself always. And I've talked about it so many times. And that's why I have a self-love practice, which I'll put a link in the comments, you can check it out, which is one of the cornerstones of building your own self-support structures to become a better partner in relationship. That is the way to enter a relationship so that when a relationship happens, when you're in a relationship, it becomes much more sustainable because you're you're in a place where you're, it's like when you're already honoring and respecting yourself, being in a relationship with somebody who honors respects you too is easier. And in fact, the other part of that is when you are self-loving, self-respecting, self-appreciating in relationship, the other person doesn't do it, you walk away. That's self-care, self-support, because you realize they can't provide what you need, what you want, and what you desire. Take care of yourself first, let go of the relationship, make room for somebody who does deserve that and who you deserve as well. That brings me to another piece I'm going to put. The, uh, I'm putting all the links in the comments tonight. Sorry, my apologies. There's going to be, there's going to be four links in the comments already, you know it. Um, my Coming Home to Yourself course, I haven't have mentioned for a few days, but it's my new group program that is really, really guided, created, and defined to help you come into a full relationship with yourself on all these levels that give you the ability to be in a much healthier relationship with everybody else. So that's going to be in the comments too. So my book, as I mentioned, Self Love Practice, Coming Home to Yourself, I'll put the link in there for that as well. And finally, for those of you who want some direct help, I will put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me, a complimentary clarity conversation with me. Because if you want to go deep and find out what's going on and how to get clarity in your relationship choices, I can help you with that. That's why I do these talks every day. And by the way, if you haven't seen my talks every day, why not? No, kidding. But this is this is my daily um, Facebook Live, by the way, in case you haven't seen them before. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time here on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Sorby, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Put it in Canada and join me tomorrow. Um, the replay is going to my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. You can like my page, please, and you can watch them there. Or if you like watching on YouTube, because it may be easier for you, maybe it's easier on your mobile or wherever you are, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, and you can watch all my broadcasts there as well. Sort through by titles, find the one you want, because there are 700, and, including this one, 794 of them now, so quite a few. So again, four links in the comments. I invite you to check them out. They will help you, each one or all of them, as you choose. Um, the replays, I told you where you can find them. And my invitation to you is look for ways in your life, if you're single, where you can take better care of yourself in preparation for an amazing relationship. If you were to be presented with your perfect partner tomorrow, what would you do for yourself today as a way to prepare for that? And I don't mean preparing for them, I mean preparing yourself to be with you. Maybe my self love practice will help you with that. But my invitation is to look at that as a possibility of being in an amazing relationship. What would you be doing for yourself to be in a better place for that relationship? So when the new relationship energy wears off, you'll actually be stronger, healthier, more loving, more self-supportive, and better partnership orientation. You'll have a better partnership orientation to be there. That's your homework. <laughs> so with that, I thank you for watching. I'll be back in tomorrow, same time, same channel. Any questions, thoughts about this, please put them below and I'll respond in the comments after I sign off. The links in the comments will be there for you to browse, peruse, and sign up for. I invite you to check them out. They'll help you. And I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. As always, please take care of yourself. And I'll see you again soon.